Hello guys, myself Pawan and you are watching Optimistic Coder and in this video we are going to discuss about class as an object. So in this video we will be covering up what is a class, what is an object, how to create an object. Then we will see how, uh, how what all members do we have inside a class. And we will also understand uh, in brief about constructor because there is a separate video coming up about constructors in detail. but. Uh, in this video i will just go make you through understand what is a constructor but there will be a detailed video on that so these all topics will be covered in this video so watch the video till the end and if you are new to this channel consider subscribing because i'm coming up with new videos every week so let's get started Okay, so first thing comes first about what is a class, okay? So when we discuss about class in programming language, we tend to say a definition or a, we try to tend to say one thing that is class is a kind of blueprint. So this is a basic reference definition. You can see the first line in any of the websites in any textbook, it will be said that class is a kind of a blueprint or a kind of a template and objects are real world entity so let's understand first what is the meaning of this blueprint or why this class is referred to be as a blueprint now when we create a class or anything they class will be having some features and some behaviors okay so now let's take an example and understand now consider you have a blueprint of a car okay you have a blueprint of a car it could be i think from I don't know anyways it will be come popping up here or there i will just put it anywhere okay anyways so uh, it will be the blueprint of the car and if i ask you that uh, do you feel that this blueprint is a car if i ask you is it a car or not what you are going to say you will the obvious answer is no it's not a car because it's a blueprint which is having a design of a car and that blueprint will be having all the kind of features like what all features does that car have which will it be a two-seater or a four-seater will it be a racing car or not will it be having a, a width how much how much is the width how much is the height what is the door size and uh, what model or what type of uh, that car is going to be all those stuff will be mentioned in that blueprint it doesn't mean that that blueprint is a car okay so the in the same way in programming also a class will have all the features variables functions methods written in that which is uh, having all the features it will be mentioned in that particular class but can we use it directly no it's not possible to use it we need to create a real world object or an object of that particular class and then we can use those features in the exact same way as in the example i said we have a blueprint of a car and if you are creating a car out of it using the uh, blueprint then you will have an object which will be having all those features the height the width the number of seats then uh, all those features will be exactly same and that's a real world entity and if i ask you what is a car you will say the real world entity is a car and this is a blueprint in the exact same way programming also has the class and object concept so i hope this example was good and understandable so as we have discussed a lot about class and object theoretically now let's have a look on practical implementation in eclipse so if you are watching this video till this point i recommend you if you haven't subscribed please subscribe it and don't forget to turn on that notification okay so i have created here a project already uh, named as class object demo and inside that we will be having a package and i will be creating a class so here i will be taking an example of a human the class name will be human and let's click on finish and here you go you get the class okay so this is our class and i am going to create some of the features that we need to have so when we talk about features features are nothing but the variables that we have inside the class so inside humans what are the features that a human have humans are have uh, having his name then some of the features right so our human class will have three features so first is our human will have a name that is a feature and our human will also have an age which is also going to be a feature 
and our human class will also have height so these are the features that we are going to have in human class so we will not make it more complicated by keeping so much a bunch of uh, data data types but this three will be enough to understand that these are the features that we have inside the class now let's create some of the behaviors that our human will have our human class will go will be having so our human class will have three different behaviors one is um, walking second is uh, sleeping and uh, third is speaking so we will have these three kind these three features so let's do it so let's create a method public void um, walk we'll have a walk function so in this method we will have a print message saying that it's walking let's create another method public void speaking or you can just have speak and this we can have uh, so in this print we can we can just print it out his name or his or her name age and height in centimeters so that's the speak function that we are going to have and at the end we will have sleep function and it will print the value as sleeping fine we can save this particular program and our function uh, our class of human is created which is having features of name age and height and behavior of walking speaking and sleeping so we have walk speak and sleep as functions or methods here so to use this particular class as i said we need to create an object and then only we can create or sorry then only we can uh, use these functions um, from that object so let's create an another class and let us give the class name as person so let's check this um, void main click on finish so we have the person class with the main inside it let's create the human class object so we will have our first person new and there you go so you have the object created here so let's now invoke the functions so p1 dot can walk person can speak and our person p1 can um, sleep too okay so we have invoked the method also and let's play the program and see so as you can see the program works fine but there is a bit mistake here it's not a mistake but you can see here that walking is done sleeping is done properly but when it comes to speak you can see that it says i am null i am zero and i have a height of zero dot zero centimeters which make no sense which means that the values that we have given as name age and height is given as null zero and zero 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 point zero why does that happen this has happened because we haven't used constructor so there is a concept of constructor coming into picture and for now you can just understand that constructors are something which is going to initialize the values that you want to give it into a program initially so whenever a program is whenever an object is created so that object 
will create will be created with the help of a constructor so whenever an object is created by default there is a constructor that is going to be created and that constructor is going to initialize all the features all the variables in short all the variables into a default value that is 0 null 0, 0.0 all those stuff but if you want that no you want your own values to be invoked or your own values to be assigned then you need to uh, create a constructor inside your program inside the class so that it will assign the values that what the what you need so let's create a constructor so constructor is nothing but a special kind of a special method which is going to initialize your values when you try to create an object so the basic concept or why we need a constructor or where we use a constructor we use a constructor only when we need to assign something initially at the time of object creation so let's create a constructor here so to write the constructor the constructor name will be human we will have a complete other video about constructors in detail so for now just understand that constructor name will be equal to the class name and it is a special kind it is a, it is a special method which is used to assign values initially when the object is created so here we can just pass on some parameters and to get the inputs we can just pass here like string n for name int a for h and double uh, height for h and we can just assign name as n and for age we can assign the a value and for height we can assign it h that is via that we are passing so let's save this program and let's go to the person class here so you can see here that we are getting our error it's nothing but it is saying that whatever the constructor that you have create trying to whatever the object that you are creating that object needs some parameters so try to give some parameters and this error will be gone so whatever the parameters that we have mentioned in there as a constructor so in that sequence we need to mention all the parameters here while we create an object so the first parameter was the name so let's give the name as tom and the second parameter was his age so let's let's give the age as 23 and third was the height in centimeters so we will just give 189.5 i think that will work fine so let's save the program and let's run it once again so when you run it now you can see the output is pretty good that the tom can walk and he's saying that i am tom i'm tom i'm 23 years old and i have a height of 189.5 centimeters and then at the end of the day tom sleeps so now let's understand what internally happens when you try to create an object this is a class name human that is a class name and p1 is the reference variable it's not an object it's a reference variable most of the people get confused and usually people just communicate themselves with name saying that it's an object no it's not an object it's a reference variable now what is a reference variable reference variable is only going to store the reference or the address of the object okay it's not going to store the object or it is not an object it is going to store the address of the object please understand that so when it encounters new keyword it creates a space inside heap or we can say a pool inside a heap so when it creates a pool or a space or a vacancy inside heap memory and after that a constructor is there so our constructor is going to initialize all the values or the variables that we have mentioned in the particular class will be assigned to that will be assigned into that particular memory location or the heap that has been newly created or the uh, pool that is newly created inside the heap and it will also put all the non-static functions or methods in that particular pool so basically when an object this particular line is executing first it is going to create a reference variable and then an object uh, and then inside the heap memory location will be uh, getting allocated or a free memory location will be given 
and then that constructor this constructor is going to assign or going to store the values that should be there for the variables and it is going to also store all the non-static members into it so after doing all those stuff our object will be created and then this object's address will be stored inside p1 that is the reference variable so whenever we are trying to use that reference variable that reference variable is going to point back to the object and it is going to use the non-static functions now so here by the the term non-static just don't get confused uh, we will have a separate video on constructor in detail we will have a complete video on non-static and static so let us for now just understand that if any of the members present inside the class is not having a static keyword then it is not considered as a static member it is considered as a non-static member and whenever a constructor is initialized its work is to bring all the non-static members inside that pool and the job will be done the object will be created so in this case when the object is going to be when object will be created inside the pool first all the features will be put into and then the functions that are the methods that are non-static that is walk speak and sleep will also be stored inside the pool and then the object will be created and the reference variable will point to back to it so that's the whole point internally what happens when an object is created so likewise you can create n number of objects that you want you can create a um, whole lot of many objects so let's create one more object and see whether it works fine or not so we can create a new object p2 and we can have a name ravi age 25 and height we can have 180.5 so now in this case the two pools will be created for two objects and the constructor for both will be storing the values inside that pool and non-static members will be stored and then the reference variable will get the address of it and whenever we are trying to invoke the function or the method or the non-static members we are able to get the values from there so that's the whole point of class and object so that's all in today's videos guys i hope you liked the video if you liked it please hit like and subscribe to my channel don't forget to leave a comment below and share with your friends i will see you in the next video till then bye bye